hello and welcome to another part of the video now we are starting the next part of contact lens fitting we are going to discuss an important aspect of contact lens ablating known as fitting ablation partially focus on corneal coverage let's dive in corneal coverage is a crucial factor to consider when ablating the feet of contact lenses it has several Im implication both optical and mechanical and plays a role in ensure comfort and maintaining good ocular health fitting ablation optically corneal coverage affected various aspect of vision correction firstly it centration which refer to how well the contact lens aligned with the center of the cornea proper centration is the important achieve clear and visual equity corneal cover is also related to the shape regularity of the cornea the contact lens should conform well to the shape of the cornea to provide optimal vision correction additionally it helps evaluation the anterior eye shape which adds determining the appropriate lens design and fit on the mechanical front corneal coverage is circular for protecting the cornea and surrounding structure it helps prevent potential trauma or damage to the cornea limbal area and conjunctiva proper cover and show that the lens does not cause discomfort or irritation during wear. Comfort is another aspect influenced by corneal covers. The contact lens should cover the corneal adequately without causing excessive corneal exposure or dysentery. It should also maintain a healthy tear flame with contribute to the lens voidability and overall comfort ideally a fitted ablation aims for about 1 mm of symmetrical overlap between the contact lens and the corner this ensure proper coverage while allowing enough oxygen and clear exchange for health of the cornea in summary corneal coverage is a crucial consideration during the fitting ablation of contact lenses it impacts optical factor uh, centration and shape regularities as a well as a mechanical aspect as such protecting the cornea and ensure comfort approximately 1 mm of symmetrical overlap is considered idea for a well fitted lens fitting ablation let's continue our discussion on fitting ablation of contact lenses and this time well we will focus on lens movement let's explore why lens movement is necessary and what it significant lens movement refer to the ability of the contact lens to move slightly on the surface of the eye this movement several serves several important purpose that contribute to the overall health of comfort of the wear one of the key benefit of lens movement is it ability to remove the remove and disappear ocular debris as the lens move on the eye it help to gently sweep away particles like dust or tear film debris this action promotes clearer vision and maintain a clean and healthy ocular environment let's move on also plays a role in promoting tear exchange as the lens move it help to facilitate the circular of the tear between the cornea and the lens the exchange of tear ensure the fresh supply of the oxygen and nutrition to the cornea while removing metabolic waste produced it contribute to the maintaining the health and visibility of the corneal tissues additionally lens movement has the potential to aid in the weighting of the corneal epithelium the movement of the lens may help to spread and smooth the mucus layer on the corneal surface mucin is a component of the tear film that help to lubricate and moisturing 
cornea. This aids in maintaining a smooth and comfort contact lens wearing experience. During fitting ablation, lens movement is typically observed in two types. The first step is known as the post blink movement, which is the initial movement of the lens. Right after blinking, the movement helps the lens settle into the proper position of the cornea. The second step involves observing the lens movement within the primary position of gauge where it should exhibit stability in terms of acceptable movement a range of approximate 1 mm is considered acceptable for a well-fitted lenses this range allow for optimum debris removal tear exchange and potential benefit retail to the epithelium weighting it ensures it appropriate amount of the movement without exchange shifting and initiate to summarize, the lens movement is a necessary aspect to fit a debulation for contact lenses. It helps remove ocular debris, promotes tear exchange and potential aids in epithelium weightability. Lens movement is observed in two steps, the post blinky movement and stable movement within the primary position of catch, a movement of approximately 1 mm is considered ex fitting evolution we continue our discussion on the fitting evolution of contact lenses and this time we'll explore two important aspect lens legs and tight let's dive in let's lens leg lens leg referred to the amount by which the contact lens trial in the movement of the eye it help us assess how well the lens move in the uh, coordinating uh, with the eye. Lens leg is commonly observed in the three different positions: one degree gaze up and down gauge, lateral gauge in the one degree gauge, which is the primary position of the gaze. A lens leg of 0.2 to 0.5 mm is generally considered acceptable. This means that the contact lens should follow the movement of the eye with the slight lag within this range. When we look in the up and down gaze, a lens leg of up to 1.5 mm is considered acceptable. This allows for the some flexibility and movement of the lens as the eye looks upward and downward. Similarly, in lateral gauge, which refer to looking sideways, a lens leg of up to 1.50 mm is also acceptable. This ensures that the lens can adjust it and move smoothly as the eye shift its gauge from side to side. Tightness by push up method is a objective assessment of how tightly the contact lens fit on the eye one method is ability tightness is the push up method in this method the lower lid is gently pulled uh, away from the eye and the lens is pushed by the lower lid the pressure required to the lens indicates its tightness express has the percentage if the uh, pressure required to move the lens is around 100%, it suggests an uh, immobile lens indicate a tight fit. This means the lens is tightly adhering to the eye and may cause discomfort or affected tear flow. On the other hand, if the pressure required is, a, is around 30%, it indicates a loose fit and loose fit means that the lens is not uh, adhering to the eye and may move excessively lead to potential discomfort and reducing stability a pressure requirement of 50 to 60 percent is considered a good fit as expected it indicates that the lens is properly fitted providing adequate stability and comfort during wear Remember that both lens lag and tightness assessment require ex expertise and should be evaluated by the by an eye 
air propulsion. This evolution helped to ensure that the contact lens fit well and provide optimal vision, correction and comfort. Fitting description. We are going to discuss fitting description for contact lenses, specifically focusing on different uh, characteristics and their implication. Let's dive right in. A good fit for a contact lens is characterized by several key factors. Firstly, centration refers to the position of the lens on the eye. In a good fit, the lens is well centered and provides a complete coverage of the of the cornea. They ensure optimal vis visual correction and a comfortable wearing exp experience. Regarding movement, a good fit typically shows slight movement of the up to the 1.00 mm on blink. This movement helps with tear exchange and maintaining healthy calcular environment. Additionally, during upward or lateral gauge, the lens may exhibit slightly movement up and up, up and to uh, 1.50 mm, providing necessary flexibility without excessive shifting. In terms of good fit resulting in clear and cons consistent visual acuity, the contact lens proper aligned with the eye, allowing the optimal con correction of reflective error. Comfort is another important characteristic of good fit, where good experience a comfortable sensation with minimum awareness of the lens pressure throughout the day when conducting an overreaction, which involves placing another lens over the existing on the fine tune the prescription. A good fit exhibits a, a precious and the end point the resulting power hmm, correlated well with the in the intended precision provided accurate vision correction now let's move on this type of and flat a fits a step fit occurs when the a contact lens sit to steeply on the cornea well a flat fit indicate that the lens is a positioning to a flatty. In a stiff feet, uh, centration may still may be good, providing completely coverage of the cornea. However, there are may be some decentration or no movement observed on blinking. This can lead to various and sometimes poor visions with blinking. Comfortable may initially be good of award long term wear can become loss uh, comfortable on the other hand in the flat feet uh, sensation is poor and the lens may exhibit excessive movement on blinking upward gauge and lateral gauge this can result in poor vision with various improvement since up starting after blinking comfortable tends to be proper compared to a good fit. During an over reaction in both steps and flat fit, the end point may be pro uh, poorly defined, making it challenge to uh, accurately detain the final precision. Summary on a good fit of contact lenses characterized by proper Centration, uh, complete coverage of the cornea, slight movement on the blinking and gauging is clear visions and overall comfort steps and flat feet may exhibit certain, certain deficiencies such as uh, poor cent uh, centration, excessive or limited movement, various visions and discomfort. Toric soft contact lens. We are going to explore the different design of toric soft contact lenses and their advantages and limitation. Specifically, we will discuss prism, uh, reverse prism and uh, periplast and truncations designed. Let's get started. Uh, prism blast design is the simplicity from the toric SCL design. It incorrected a based on prism uh, oriented the lens on the eye. The amount of prism used can range from 1 mm to 1.5 mm prism diopter. Average of the prism blast design including 
keeping the overall thickness of the lens uh, to a minimum help optimize the uh, psychological response of the eye and promotes patient comfort during lens wear however it's important to note that and the prism plus design is may not be reliable for patient with a loose leads or those require high minus lenses this factor can affected uh, proper alignment and uh, stability of the lens on the eye reverse prism design is an ambulatory uh, species the builds up the prism blast design a uh, corporate uh, down and built up prism into the integrated design the goal is the thinner lens uh, lens that offer improved comfort by incorporating the base of prism, uh, reverse prism design aims uh, to enhance lens stability and orientation on the eye. And this can help improving visual clarity and overall wearing experience for uh, to, uh, parablaster. Uh, the parablast design start with a, a minimum design and tie limiting the prism to the area outside. Uh, optical tone of the lens this design approach help minimum potential the visual disturbance caused by the prism however its growth noting uh, the uh, periplast design may reduce oxygen transmission through the lens which can impact the lens of the cornea and overall comfort for the wearer tracation the tracation design uh, involved removing the lower portion of the prism blasting lens. The modification help reduce the weight and uh, thickness of the lens, enhance comfortable for wearer. It is important to remember that the tools of the toric soft contact lens design depend on the various factors, including the specific needs and characteristic of the wearer eyes. You eye care professional will determine the most suitable design based on the individual requirement. In summary, Doric subcontact lenses comes in different design including prism blast, reverse prism, parablast and trunk. Each design offered its own advantage and limitation in terms of lens thickness. Physiology response, patient comfort and visual performance. Correcting astigmatism with toric contact lens. We are going to explore the use of toric contact lenses in correcting astigmatism. Especially discuss the rule of spherical soft contact lens, spherical rigid gas permeable lens, and toric spherical soft contact lens in astigmatism correction. Let's dive right in. When it comes to across correcting astigmatism, spherical soft contact lens can be used in causes uh, uh, where the astigmatism is low. The recommended ratio is typically 4 to 1, meaning the special power uh, is 4 times greater than this cylindrical power. For low cylindrical precision, up to 0 0.50 diopter, spherical subcontact lens can be a variable choice. However, it's important to note that if the cylindrical power excesses excessed 3.75 diopter, visual acuity may be uh, compromised with spherical subcontact lens alone. In such cases, alternative op option need to be considered. Spherical uh, rigid gas permeable lenses are another op option. Stigmatism. These lenses are affected in correcting corneal astigmatism but may be not suitable for lenticular astigmatism. Your eye care professional will determine whether spherical RGP lenses are the right choose for your specific astigmatism correction need. Finally, toric uh, subcontact lenses are obtained the final op option considered by the uh, practitioner for astigmatism correction. These lenses offer the advantages of 
soft materials providing improved comfort compared to the other soft soft contact lens options additional toric soft contact lens offered enhanced visual uh, performance by correcting each of the principal meridian those seeing the astigmatic pencil to a point on the retina advantage of toric soft contact lens including keep the overall thickness of the lens to a minimum optimizing the physiological response of the eye and enhancing patient comfort during lens wear in summary correcting stimulation with toric contact lenses involved during uh, option based on the severity and types of astigmatism spherical subcontact lens can be used for low astigmatism while spherical rgb lenses correcting corneal astigmatism however toric subcontact lens are often preferred choice due to their comfort advantage and improved visual performance fitting toric subcontact lenses we are going to discuss fitting techniques for uh, toric subcontact lenses and the various method uh, used to measurement lens uh, rotation let's drive right in when it comes to fitting toric subcontact lenses there are three main techniques that i care professionally use diagnostic fitting number one the diagnostic fitting techniques involve using various diagnostic lenses to evaluating the fit and the visual performance of the toric subcontact lens the techniques allow the um, practitioner to assess the lens position movement and overall comfort on the patient eye by the trying different uh, diagnostic lenses the practitioner can determine the most appropriate uh, parameter for a successful toric subcontact lenses toric trial lenses number two the toric trial lenses technique involve using a specific toric trial lens to assess the feed and visual performance of the final toric subcontact lens position these techniques allow the practitioner to find the tune of the lens meant based on the patient response to the trailer lens by evaluating lens rotation and the practitioner can ensure an optimal fit for the toric subcontact empirical method number three the empirical method is another fitting take support contact lens technique used in toric subcontact lenses with this method the practitioner selection and lens uh, parameter based on the uh, parameters defective error and cornea together without prior uh, diagnose or trial lenses fitting while well, these techniques offer uh, consider combines convince efficiency it may not be as uh, perfect as the diagnostic or toric lens and now let's uh, talk about the method of using human measurement lens ratio or toric subcontact lens Accurate measurement of the lens uh, rotating is essential for the ensure power alignment. Uh, alignment suitable on the eye. Several methods are em employed for this link. Some toric subcontact lens link back on the lens surface that can be uh, used to assess rotating by observing the position the thing of the ink marks relative to the corneal axis the practitioner can determine the known amount of rotation photochemical dots another method involving using photochemical dots placed on the lens this does not change color expose and uv light allowing the practitioner to measure the lens rotation using specific equipment let's certain toric subcontact lens have laser mark on the on the lens lens surface this mark can be aligned with the corneal as axis to determine the ratio of the lens the gray bed dots lastly the smooth toric subcontact lens have and largely dots on the lens surface that can by visualized assessed for issue 
lens talk about contact lens for how they were to provide clear visions at different distance let's and let's start it preservation is a condition that uh, affected our near vision as well as age in it be difficult to object up to close contact lenses designed for as we have specific features and that allow for clear vision at multiple design in which you are uh, looking at the close up object uh, like a book or your phone the contact lenses for presbyopia use a technology called multi use means that the can to or areas that will be a uh, different level for and separation it's important to note that the contact lens will as by design and the contact lens uh, while other may be the rigid gas permeable lenses and the process depend on the various factor including comfort perception requirement will i in uh, selecting the right type of the contact lens or needs certain system we're going to talk about the citation system and how it can help to understand centered and decentered uh, lenses using a coordinate system don't worry it's simply and then it sound first let's start with the citation system image a grid with two perpendicular lines one horizontal and one vertical cross at the at a point called the origin this line are called the x axis and the y axis respective the citation system helped us to locate point in the two dimension space using coordinates now let's move on the lens these lens are transparent object that can bend light they are commonly used in glasses cameras and telescope to help us to see things more clear when light passes through their lens it get refract or bend allow us to focusing the light and from image in the context of lens we obtain talk about and center and decenter lenses a center lens is symmetric main winning it optic coincide with the geometrical center of the lens this result in a simple and predictable behavior when light passes through it on the other hand a decentered lens is a lens hole whose optical center does not align with its geometrical center this can introduce complexity in the behavior of light passing through the lens decentered lenses can cause aberration which are imperfection in the image formed by the lens understanding these aberration is crucial in field like photography and optical design now how does the citation system come into play with lenses well we can use the citation coordination uh, to describe the position of the object the lens can and lens the and the image form by assigning in x and y coordinate to those elements we can analyze how the ray light rays interact with the lens and predict where the image will appear for central lenses the analysis is relatively straightforward the lens is placed symmetrically along the citation axis and the image form will also be symmetrical the coordinate helped us determine the location and properties of the lens image accurate however for decentration lens the analysis become a bit more complex since the lens is not symmetrical positioned the behavior of light passing through it can vary depending on the angle position angle and position of the object the citation coordination help us to track this uh, variation and understand how they affected the final image in summary the citation system is a valuable tool to understand the behavior of light in lenses it all allow us to describe position of the object lens and image using coordinates which help us analyze both centered and decentered lenses centration examples 
particularly when it comes to contact lenses uh, don't worry i will keep it simple and easy to understand the citation system as well discussed early involve a coordinate system with a x axis and a y axis interesting at the or origin this system it widely used in mathematics and optical to describe the position of object and point in space now when it come to contact lenses the citation referred to the location of the the geometrical center of the lens aligned with the center of your eye this ensure that the uh, corrective power of the lens is appropriately positioned providing you with the clear and comfortable vision on the other hand we have compound examples of the decentering soft contact lens these are lenses are where the geometrical center does not align with the center of the your eye this misalignment can lead to various issues such as blurred visions discomfort and reduced visual acuity by using the centration system eye care professional can assess the center centration of contact lenses and make necessary adjustment to ensure proper alignment and optimal vision correction they can measure the op position of the lens relative to the eye and make sure it centration correctly the primary advantage of using the citation system for center its wide spread use in mathematics and optics it provide a stabilized precious way to describe the position of the object and point allowing the for accurate analyzing and adjustment in lens position so the recap and centration in the context of lens contact lens refer to the location of the geometrical center of the lens sent kite coordinate system centration is essential for the optimal vision correction and using the uh, citation system help eye care professional ensure that the lens is aligned correctly with your eyes centration binasal system let's explore another centration system known as the binasal system especially in the context of the contact lens don't worry i will explain in in e and straightforward manner in the binasal system in the next centration of the contact lens is a described based on the location it geometrical center within a coordinate system unlike the citation system we discussed earlier the binasal system focused on the nasal center regardless of which i is being referred to let's take about talk about uh, coordinates in the system the y coordinate in the binasal system are signed the same way as in the citation system mean that up is the consider positive plus b and down is the consider negative minus b now when we talk about this con concentration example using the binasal system nasal disintegration is always indicated as a positive value plus v this means that if a contact lens is disintegrated towards the nasal side of the eye it will be as it present as a positive value in the coordination system on advantage of using binasal system is the simplicity of data recording in this system the sign plus or minus along indicates whether there are nasal uh, disintegration without the need to specific with why is involved this uh, simplify the description and recording a uh, centration data to summarize in the binasal system uh, centration of the contact lens is described at based on the location of its symmetrical center within a coordinate system nasal disintegration is always indicates as a positive value regardless of the i being referred to the system offered a straightforward and simple way to record the described described centration data diagram show simple and 
compound example of disintegration of lenses. The same system can also be apply applied to re rigid lenses. We explore centration example in a correct lenses. Now, let's take a closer look at a simple and compound example and disintegration of lenses as well as how this system can be applied to rigid lenses. The diagram you will see show cases both simple and compound example of disintegration soft lenses. When we say a lens is disintegrated, it means that its geometrical center does not align with the center of the eye. The misalignment can be lead to be various issues such as blurred vision, discomfort and reduced visual acuity. In the case of the simple disintegration soft contact lens, uh, the misalignment is relatively uh, straightforward and uh, the geometrical center of the lens is shifted away from the center of the eye, causing the corrective power of the lens to be off-center. This can result in uh, suboptimal vision correction and may require adjustment to improve visual clarity. On the other hand, we have compound disintegration soft lenses these lenses exhibit a more complex form the misalignment in additional to being a disintegration they may also have other uh, aberration or uh, irregulation in their shape or design this can further impact visual equity and may necessity uh, specialized correction or less design it important to note that the same system of analyzed a uh, disintegrated lens can be can also be applied to rigid lenses whether they are soft or rigid the principle remained uh, the same the geometrical center of the lens is compared to the center of the eye and any misalignment is taken into account for optimal vision by using this system eye care professional can assess the degree and nature of the eye disintegration and make a necessary adjustment. This adjustment may involve modifying the lens design, alternating the position of the lens on the eye, or exploring other corrective position to improving vision quality. In summary, the diagram you see represent simply and compound example of disintegration of lenses. The same system uh, can be also be applied to rigid lenses. Disintegration lenses require carefully assess and adjustment by the care professional uh, to ensure optimal vision correction. So we are going to explore the world specialized contact lens design specific for sports. These contact lenses offered unique features that enhance preference and providing a clear visual experience when it comes to sports <laughs> athletes require to clear and unilateral vision of excel in chosen activity special contact lenses are designed to meet this specific need to uh, and provide a company a co competitive edge on the field or counts one type of specific contact lens is the tainted lenses. These lenses come in various color and can enhance contrast and improving depth of perception, which can be particularly helpful in sports, tennis or baseball. Secondly, the, they can filter specific wavelength of light, reducing glare and improving visual comfort in bright outward conditions another type of special contact lens is the prohibiting uh, photochromatic lenses this is lens have the ability of the able to attain changing light conditions when exposed to the sunlight lenses dark darken reducing glare and and optimizing visual equity I hope you enjoyed this discussion and found it helpful in expanding your understanding of contact. If you have any further question or need additional information, feel free to explore reliable reach out to the our eye care version.
थैंक यू वंस अगेन फॉर जॉइनिंग मी एंड आई विश यू ऑल द बेस्ट इन योर फ्यूचर एंड वर्ल्ड टेक केयर ऑफ यू आईज एंड कीप एक्सप्लोर fascinating world of the i care thank you again